Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Nerd Theory. We're very, very happy to have you here today. Uh, before we begin, make sure you hit that like button, and let's get started with today's episode. So Josh, what's going on, man? What's going on, brother? This one is a wild one. Um, I have a lot of mixed feelings about it, uh, but I think it'll make for good conversation. I don't think it's all bad, but there's definitely some confusing aspects to it, so... Okay, so you want to bring that up on screen, and while you do that, I'll read the few super chats that we got before we uh, even began. Which thank you guys for that. I genuinely don't understand how this is possible, says Snow Miss. So this is a rumor, and we're going to get to it, but there's a lot of validity to it apparently, and we're going to you know, break it down, and give you our thoughts. Sony should trade SM for SW. Why you may ask? Well, I mean, they can't do worse, right? Says. Snow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. Let's see, we got another one here. $50 donation from the Machete Order. The Machete Order. Uh, the Machete Order. Something isn't adding up. The lack of content on Disney Plus Day is a huge red flag and no official announcement on KK's contract. If the rumors are true, I think KK is producing with no creative control and Rogue Squadron was Filoni's doing. Mm, okay, so that's an interesting take. I don't exactly, I, I don't think you're spot on, but you're definitely, it's definitely true that something very weird is going on. So I will quote uh, this article here on the direct. And I actually think, guys, this article is incredible. Uh, I referenced it in a video earlier, but I had to cut out a lot of what I was reading in this article because it's so good and captivating and interesting, but it was just, it was becoming a little bit long. The juice though is right here. Okay. So Matthew Belloni or Belloni, uh, can't be Belloni, right? Can, can, can you enlarge it a bit? Uh, let me see here. Boom. There we go. There we a little go. bit there. Okay. So, uh, yeah, this guy who writes for this website called Puck, and he is a former editor of The Hollywood Reporter, and he shared that Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy's contract has been extended for another three years. The contract previously expired in October 2021. Additionally, Baloney's insiders noted that Rogue Squadron is indefinitely delayed due to creative differences between Lucasfilm and director Patty Jenkins. Now, the article here is kind of behind a paywall so we're not going to check out this full article here but this is the article over here and uh the dude is not being shy about this at all he's saying it's time to take star wars movies away from kathleen kennedy and within this article he is talking about the patty jenkins rogue squadron movie okay so if you guys remember i believe it was last week theory it could have been two weeks ago we talked about the yeah. possibility of the road of the old republic movie yeah it was last week yeah it got canceled right. well yeah. delayed indefinitely which is yes yeah. right so this is what's kind of weird about this is that the initial reports about this movie falling apart we're coming from a couple of different insiders a guy named big screen leaks and then a guy named jordan mason um and they were reporting that patty jenkins and um lucasfilm not playing nicely together they were splitting and that movie was just nowhere near ready to be filmed so instead they were sort of streamlining an old republic movie okay and a couple of days after we talked about that the Hollywood trades confirmed this to be real. Now, the Hollywood trades tried to paint this in the picture of scheduling conflicts, okay? So sometimes the way that this works is there's narratives created through the trades. They play very nice with the studio, and so they will word things in a certain type of way to try to sort of make it less harsh. This dude who used to work for the trades and is now going independent, which you see that all across the board. I actually think it's great. Um, this guy is not pulling any punches. He says here, top filmmakers are dying to make Star Wars movie until they sign on and experience the micromanagement and plot point by committee process. Jenkins wasn't willing to dick around. And so she just walks away. Okay. Then you get these stories coming from this dude that Kathleen Kennedy has re-upped her contract for three years. And I don't have to tell the Star Wars fans here, this comes in the middle of a bunch of different L's. We can talk about Disney Plus Day, and I know some fans out there have the attitude of, well, we weren't necessarily promised anything by Disney. That's a lie. You were promised stuff by Disney. The Star Wars account promised stuff. They promised the reveal of new material. 
And if you look at some of the trailers for Disney Plus Day, you can see the logos for the things that were supposed to have content on Disney Plus in some of the official Disney Plus, uh, you know, trailers and whatnot. It definitely appears that something changed last minute for Disney Plus. On top of that, on that very same day, it was debunked in the Hollywood trades that Chloe Zhao, who is the director of Eternals, was going to be directing Kevin Feige's Star Wars movie or any Star Wars movie. Okay, now why is that important? Because the original source that said that Patty Jenkins was having trouble with Lucasfilm and that you were getting an Old Republic movie, it's that same guy who said Chloe Zhao was going to direct Kevin Feige's Star Wars movie. So strange things are afoot at the Circle K theory. There's a lot of different ways that we could go with this in discussions, but I guess just at a base level, what do you think about the, for now, rumor uh, that Kathy has signed for three more years? What do you think about that? Uh, well, you know, I don't know Kathy personally, but judging by her uh, comments on Star Wars, you know, no source material and this and that and the direction that she's taken it, uh, having governed uh, the sequel trilogy and everything, I, I think she needs to go. I yeah. think it's her time is up. And I think, you know, while she may have been an amazing producer for so many of our favorite films that we grew up with as kids, I think her handling of Star Wars and Lucasfilm isn't really the best at all. Yeah. And what really put the nail in the coffin for me was uh, in, what was it? It was um, the documentary I just read, the the bibliography or whatever it was. Um, I forgot who was on now. It was the director of Return of the Jedi. Mm. Um, forgot his name. Uh, anyways, he said that uh, there was a portion where um, when George Lucas was giving the Hollywood star to Mark Hamill, he and Kathleen Kennedy met up at the hotel across the street and he was actually pretty pissed off at how she had just, you know, said that she was going to honor his characters and trust everything and and, and be, is everything's going to be in good hands yeah. and how it wasn't at all. And so for me, that's, you know, I don't like someone like that that does that to you know to me george is like uh, another father figure so to speak you know he's yeah. like this this large grandiose being that has created so much for us so i don't like her handling of star wars and i feel that she needs to go um so i don't know if she, this is legit if she's gonna get another three years you know then she really needs to take a back seat and she needs to allow the real storytellers to handle everything such as john and dave and um I don't want her to have any say on where the story goes. She can right. just produce and she can just, you know, get her paycheck and, and do her thing that she does behind the scenes. But as for handling things like Star Wars and uh, the overall story and character arc of things, and, and it's just, yeah. I'm trying to be very careful with my words here, but I just yeah. don't, I don't want that to happen. Do you think that it's starting to come around in the sense that I think a lot of fans uh, coming out of the sequel trilogy, especially early on, were defending Kathy. Uh, like a lot of people were defending Kathy. And I know there were a lot of ridiculous attacks against her. And, and, and in some ways, the overabundance of hate that sort of followed her around, I think in some ways clouded a lot of people's judgment. They weren't necessarily able to see in my opinion, how bad of a job she was actually doing. And they were sort of just defending her because people they didn't like were attacking her, right? Do you think that some of that is starting to go away and that more it's it's becoming a little bit more mainstream to say that Kathy should no longer be in charge of Star Wars? I mean, what do you think? Yeah, well, I think there's, you know, a, a common theme with Star Wars. And it wasn't like this when I was younger, um, and in the 90s and then the early 2000s when the prequels were coming out there seems to be a common theme that um you'll, you'll, you'll always get you know people that just follow on on either side of whatever they're trying to support people who would just say oh kathleen kennedy is amazing she's an amazing job and then people who will just you know jump on the bandwagon and say she's horrible she's done this and this and this and she should be fired but then there are sort of the guys in between like you and i and i wouldn't say in between on you know fence sitters because we don't want her around yeah. But the guys who are like legitimately stating facts as to like what has gone on that she shouldn't be around in our opinions. And then there are the people who say that, well, no, she's done this and this and this, and this is why she should stay around. Mm. And those are the people that I tend to listen to. And I tend to listen to the people who just kind of like go with the wind. Yeah. So when it comes to her staying on, I think um, we can look at a lot of the actual evidence of 
where the fandom is today right. and uh, how everyone feels. Um, there wasn't this division before. And at the end of the day, you know, are you, like I've said before, are you going to get mad at Ryan Johnson or J.J. Abrams? No, you're going to get mad at the person who put them in charge. You know, the parents, the, the person mm -hmm. who really should have been overseeing everything. And I think in that, in this case, that's Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah, no, I think that's a fair. Think? Yeah, I think, um, I, I honestly think, man, that there's a, a large contingent of Star Wars fans out there. Like, uh, as an example, like, when I was, you know, going through the sequel trilogy, I was living in Philly and I had just a lot of friends and a lot of uh, Star Wars friends. And a lot of my friends had a big problem with the sequel trilogy, but they, but it, but it had nothing to do with like the usual talking points of like, you know, SJW this or like woke this or whatever. Right. So mm -hmm. a lot of my friends had a problem with Star Wars. They just, they just straight up didn't think the movies were good or that the direction the, that the things were going in was bad. And I really feel like the conversation got hijacked into becoming like a like a culture war thing. And the unfortunate side effect of that was was that a lot of just normal people that didn't like Star Wars or rather didn't like what Kathy was doing. They didn't feel like they could speak out because they'd be sort of roped in or grouped up with people that were being, you know, whether you want to call it toxic or just vocal about the things they cared about. And that was mostly like identity politics stuff. So it, it's, it's a weird one for me, man, because I've never actually felt that like, you know, like the forces females stuff or like some of that other stuff that she did. Like I've never actually thought any of that stuff was actually the issue. I think that it's just a, a real mishandling of a large IP and making some really key decisions. I mean, as a president and as an executive, I mean, most of the time you're just kind of checking in with other folks and you only make probably like, I would say five to 10 major decisions a year, but they're incredibly important decisions. That's why you get paid so much. So like, I've just thought she just straight up made some bad decisions. Like number one, she was a trend chaser when it came to getting this talent. Like she gets Gareth Edwards because he's so hot right now. She gets Ryan Johnson because he's so hot right now. She gets JJ Abrams because for whatever reason, everybody in Hollywood thinks everybody likes JJ Abrams. They don't, you know? So it's like weird that I think she just straight up made some bad decisions. I think that at this point, the PR train has sort of run away from her and there's no way to get it back. I'm not saying she can't remain president and she could actually be a part of what puts it all back together. But the Patty Jenkins thing to me is it's just really bad, man. It, it's a lot of egg on her face because Patty was going to be the first female uh, director of Star Wars. Patty's a, a, a tour de force in Hollywood. Like Patty made that really emotional video about her dad and she's probably never going to work with Lucasfilm ever again. You know what I'm saying? So like to me this this micromanaging this this style of treating it a lot like a product and not a lot like, like it's so bizarre because it feels like in some instances she is not going to let these people be the creative force that they can be but in other instances mainly the last jedi she lets ryan johnson do whatever he wants so there doesn't even seem to be a, like a consistency there right right yeah. so to me i just think frankly we're starting to maybe get to a place where more just reasonable folk are going to be able to sort of step up and be like, look, man, I'm really not happy with where Star Wars is at. It has nothing to do with this, that second and the third. I just think they should get somebody else in charge. So, well, and here's the thing. Here's the argument that I know a lot of people will make. And for me, it makes a lot of sense too. It's like, okay, so, you know, we got the sequel trilogy. A lot of people liked it. Great. A lot of people didn't like it. Oh, that sucks. Like me. But then we get, you know, great shows like The Mandalorian. We get Ahsoka's coming in, which I assume will be great. Kenobi looks freaking fire. Yeah. You know, we got Book of Boba Fett. We got all these other shows. It Luke Skywalker came in the last episode. So yeah. it's like, then we can be like, well, are we only looking at the bad things she does? Are we looking at the good things she does? But my, my question to that is, which one is she more in charge of? Mm. Has yeah. she been more hands-on with the sequel trilogy than she is with these other shows or does she have an equal distribution of power amongst all the shows and all the, all the products you know is john and dave now that they're more on board with you know the shows are they the ones running everything are they the ones kind of setting the the tone or is she the one being like hey look let's do this let's do that let's bring luke in from my understanding that's a john and dave thing mm -hmm. 
And if it yep. wasn't for them, then, you know, like the Kenobi show before it had its supposed rewrite, and this is another rumor. Yeah. Uh, like you said, it was supposed to follow uh, some female mm -hmm. and was never going to show Obi-Wan Kenobi until the last episode. Right. Mm -hmm. It's and just a, it, yeah, it's, yeah, it's just that I think she doesn't understand the IP. Like, that's the thing is like, she just frankly doesn't understand the IP yeah. and therefore she has no inkling. Like, to me, the other part of this that's really weird is this whole thing with Kevin Feige, right? Because, you know, so going back to around the time of Rise of Skywalker, I think it was pretty obvious to a lot of people that a lot of trends were going down. Uh, you know, the the buzz for Rise of Skywalker was lowest out of them. I mean, just literally the third in a trilogy that makes the least amount of money of the whole trilogy. Um you know, there were a lot of sort of signs around that time that they had gone astray, that they had not, you know, done this the right way. And I kept hearing, you know, sort of behind the scenes that they were going to look to Marvel and maybe even just because Disney was like, bro, look to Marvel. Right. And there was this idea of like, just just do it a little bit more like that and a little bit less like what you're doing. And uh, at the time, remember, there was this was like out. At the time that Rise was coming out, Kevin Feige is literally on the Star Wars show. He goes to the Star Wars show after it was announced that he was going to produce a Star Wars movie. It was like a big freaking deal. People loved it. And from what we heard, right, because we heard some things about then after that, there was sort of a pushing out of Feige and this idea that they didn't want the perception that Kathy needed to come in and be saved in any way. Right. And so there was sort of this like company line drawn in the sand where they were like, we don't want to make it look like, you know, Kathy needs any help or this, that, second, and the third. Bro, it is obvious that they need help. Like it is just obvious. And this, 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 uh, sort of bouncing back and forth between these stories, like if you think about it, right, like the Chloe Zhao story, do you think it's a just a coincidence that? days after the Hollywood trades report that the first female director of Star Wars is like, screw you, Star Wars, right? I'm out. Then days later, we get a report that Chloe Zhao will direct, not, not a Kathleen Kennedy project, but Kevin Feige's produced Star Wars, right? It felt like there was sort of this push in the press of, of like, hey, you know, Kevin Feige's Star Wars could be this. It could be the thing you're looking for. It could be the, the thing that you lost. And then, like a couple of days later, you get it debunked that she's doing not only not doing his Star Wars movie, but not doing a Star Wars movie. That also feels like something sort of in the press, you know, being pushed out. I'm actually really interested to follow this story and to see, are we going to get this announced at D23 this weekend? Mm -hmm. Are the trades going to come out and debunk this? Was this a play in the media? to try to establish a story and get support around the idea of Kathy or show sort of a toxic um, kind of, uh, you know, disagreement with it and, and to try to play some weird, you know, game to keep her, you know, in charge. I, I, I don't know, but it, or is it bullshit? It could be. You know? I mean, it, so the thing is like, it could absolutely be bullshit, but then why is that bullshit? being spread do you know what i mean like this dude's this it's, dude's that's the magic of bullshit it gets spread very yeah easily. but this isn't like this isn't like um i mean you know name your site like um i don't even know most of them anymore like giant freaking robot or um what are some of these other sites there's 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 these sites that just we pedal got this covered and yeah all we them. exactly we've got this covered like that just pedal bullcrap right yeah. they just pedal bullcrap this is not that this is coming from a pretty reliable dude. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's weird. I'm not saying it's true. It could just easily be bullcrap. But what I'm saying is, why is this bullcrap coming through channels normally reserved for solid stories? It feels weird. Yeah. You know? So yeah. I don't know. It's Look, if she's going to be in charge for another three years, you know, just let it be how it's been for the last uh, year or so where John and Dave are handling everything. That's all I, you know, I, but, it, but let day, me ask you this, though. Let me ask you this, not to cut you off, but if John and Dave were handling everything, do you think we have the problem that we just had with Patty Jenkins? 
No, dude, I don't understand what the hell is going. Like they do this so often with so many shows and projects, like Solo, and constantly just Bro, like scrapping. That's the it. point, dude. She like, came out. They, she asked for three years. She asked Bob Iger for three years. She said, "We cannot do any more movies right now. I need to take a break, reassess, and figure it out." Then you take your break, you reassess, you figure it out. Your announcements are: take a TD Star Wars movie. We don't even know what it is. Uh, Rogue Squadron with Patty Jenkins have no idea how it fits into canon, but Patty now Jenkins is cool, like, so. right? Well, like that's the thing is like, how are you going to take the time, then seemingly do the same old thing that you always do, which is just chase hot talent? It doesn't feel like there's any story. It doesn't feel like there's any plan. It's just who's yeah. hot right now. You know who's hot right now? Patty's hot. Tyke is hot. You know what I mean? Like let's get him. And then you don't even have the ability to push the thing into production you took the three years what are you what are you doing mm -hmm. like it, this is and i know some people maybe it's to them it's not that big of a deal and if we get old republic it'll be dope but i'm just saying like you cannot deny this is a pattern of behavior and this looks really bad dude because you can't even attract good talent to the studio anymore how are people going to come over and want to deal with this it's crazy yeah, they're gonna be like oh it's is crazy. my show gonna get canceled in a year like what's, what's the deal yeah Right, and dude, I was looking this, forward to the Patty Jenkins movie, man. I think Patty Jenkins is a is a true talent, and she obviously had a lot of love for the universe. And with her dad being a pilot, we could have expected. I mean, she did she did a a video on social media that was more emotional than I've ever seen <laughs> yeah, Kathy Kennedy. Yeah, know, you, right? you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. so I don't know, man. It's it's to be honest with you, it's a big bummer. I will say, just to sort of play devil's advocate and be a little bit try to be a little bit positive on it, I think it is fair to say that the three-year break kathy thought she was getting was not it didn't end up being what she thought you know with the pandy and with a lot of different things happening of course things are weird you could excuse the fact that maybe they need three more years to smooth this out because indy 5 still isn't even a thing really yeah, right and, too. yeah so like there's there is some justification in keeping her around but my problem is this according to these reports Victoria Alonso, or no, not Victoria Alonso, um, Michelle Rejuan, and some of the other people over there, bro, they're just as bad. They are part of the reason that that Patty was driven out. So at this point, unless you give it to John, who probably doesn't want it, I don't think Dave, I mean, Dave's probably very comfy, comfy in his new position, and he doesn't want that heat. He doesn't want that smoke. Who does take over for her, uh, Dave whether it's to today or three years? Stories. That's what Dave needs to focus on. Yeah. Don't distract the man. He's he's a national treasure. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So it's weird. Um, yeah, because, I mean, like, I, I kind of made this point in my vid earlier where I said, you know, if you would have told me this a week ago or two weeks ago, I actually probably would have applauded it. I would have said, hey, looks like all those... <laughs> clickbait for sure well here's why i would have said it looks like all the clickbait channels that said she was getting fired were wrong that's kind of funny and hilarious number two i would have said hey maybe this means there's a plan she has to see it out we're about to get so many projects in the next year and so many more projects after that like it, it makes sense to have stability when you're turning but after the couple of weeks we just had which is L after L after L. And then we find out her contract's extended. Bro, I'm sorry. It is a different tune for me. It's a different tune for me. I cannot be as pumped about this as I would have just a couple of weeks ago. Hmm. I would say, first of all, I don't care if uh, other channels are validated or invalidated by the reports. Um, they're not on my radar. It doesn't matter. And, and also, you know, for, for as Star Wars fans... I feel like it's not really the best thing for her to be in power, which sure. invalidates them. Which I, I, I know you might find funny, but I well, I, I I'm not even, it's not a judgment. It's a, just funny. I don't give a shit. I uh, they could be wrong or right. At the end of the day, I just you know I don't think Kathleen Kennedy should be in charge of Star Wars. Yeah, I, dude, we've been on that. I've been beating that drum for a long time. I really don't, and I've tried to be polite about it. You know, I try not to be all you know clickbaity about it or whatever. But yeah, I mean, I've been pretty consistent about that. I, I just think she's not doing a good job. I actually think they should have gotten her out of there a long time. Here's ago. the thing: if you get rid of her, then you know, it's not like we're gonna get George Lucas coming back. You know, who's gonna take well, her place? I mean, that's kind of the scary thought: is that snow you know like like it's not like you know uh, i don't know man it could be this michelle rejuan lady you know what i mean it could be 
it's sort of like her second in command or whatever over there. Well, there you um, go. I mean, it's the you get the apprentice. Yeah, but I mean, look, you know how I always say how, how that I different how di it's not going to change. Nothing's going to change. But that's the problem, right? We want it to change. I want it to be much better, and I think that there it's should be a change, fresh. Let's be real. It's not this. Star Wars is not going to change anymore. Like it's well, me, it's well, look, cemented in this world of just uh, being very careful with my words. It's being cemented. It's, it's being stuck. But here's the thing. There are people out there that I definitely think want a fresh shot at Star Wars, right? Like I, I, you know, look, I'll go back to my boy. I'll go back to simping. I think Kevin Feige would absolutely take a shot at Star Wars with a great team. Michael Waldron is an incredible writer. I think Zhao is a great director. I liked Eternals. I didn't love Eternals. Um, but that is a team that could do something fresh and new. In fact, I it was either Dan Harmon or it was the guy that's writing Ant-Man 3. He made a comment even back then when Loki was airing. He said, uh, Michael Waldron is perfect for Star Wars because he loves it, but he's got a certain swagger. He could do something fresh, do something new, but I don't know if he'd be able to work under that regime. Bro, Hollywood talks. These people all talk. Everybody in Hollywood knows what it is. She has this weird iron fist, my way or the highway. It's got to be this way sort of thing over there. And it's it's not working. You know what I mean? Like, it's just frankly not working. I'm sure she's a very nice lady. I just don't think she's, you know, uh, adept to be handling uh, such a unique IP. Yeah. This is not like a typical, this is not like a, you know, and don't get me wrong, I love Jurassic Park, but this is not a Jurassic Park. This is not a, don't get me wrong again, Marvel. This is not a Star mm -hmm. Trek. This is Star Wars. This, in my opinion, is the most sensitive and the biggest IP on the face of the planet since 1977. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny, it's, though. In some ways, I don't think unique. that... I think it's super unique and I think you're right. And the sensibility is, is you got to be careful for sure with the sensibility. But if I'm being honest, I don't even think it's that deep, bro. Like, I don't think it's really that challenging to make good Star Wars content. You know, like, I think that the problem with Kathy is she's got a very specific way. She sees all of this going down and she sees all of it fitting together, which, by the way, I have no earthly idea where that like mentality comes from because she has yet to prove that she can actually do that right i mean look rogue one is an incredible movie and her she she decided it wasn't good the way it was and then it needed fixed good on her that's great that was the one you know win and maybe you could say um that she saved that movie you know what i mean you could absolutely make that argument but there's under no her leadership a lot of really great stuff in hollywood yeah for sure when it comes but, to star wars that's all we're talking about we're not we're not as a person she's probably a lovely person as, you but know. how can she trust her how can she trust her sensibilities with this how is she not oh, self-aware enough to know that maybe she has those strong feelings but it's just clearly the proof is in the pudding like a large amount of the fan base does not agree that you actually have that sensibility or the eye for it like a large portion you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I just think it's weird. It's a, it's a, it is a weird situation. I honestly never thought Star Wars would get to this place. And I think in some ways, Lucasfilm, maybe even especially Kathy, is in denial, in denial of the place that they are currently at. It's not a good place, bro. You know what I, I mean? I think they're in denial. I think they just, you know, they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to publicly, you know, show uh, weakness, what they think is weakness, which in reality, I think would be really humbling if they were just like, hey, you know, if some representative came on from, let's say someone high up and like, look, we know there's a lot of division with the fandom. Uh, we want to bring you guys together. We love you guys and all of you are our customers. So we want to put out the best content that appeals to all of you. We don't hmm. uh, want to pander to just one side. Um, and, and this is the thing with Star Wars that I, I was trying to touch on earlier and I got distracted. This wasn't a, the case in the 90s or the early 2000s when the prequels came out. And, and guys, listen to this. It almost seems like, depends what kind of era of Star Wars you like, puts you in some sort of a political box. 
Mm. And all of a sudden, yeah, all of a sudden it's like if you like the sequels, then you are very far left. If you like the mm. prequels originals or you don't like the sequels, then you are very far right. And and, and I'm here to say mm. it hasn't and this is what I've seen online is that why are people being thrown into these boxes of politics about a freaking space movie that we all love? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't understand I... how that has happened and it's almost like people are becoming so political with everything it's like is yeah. this an american thing i don't understand why you guys throw politics into literally everything yeah. just keep it about the movies you know no, i, I, I couldn't agree don't, more don't play sigmund freud or don't play you know psychologists where like if you if you don't like the sequels and that means you're this and this and this and you're sexist and you're racist and you're massage <laughs> it's like can we just not like a movie yeah 100 percent. well i for, think that you know, dude i think that that is at the core of a lot of star wars problems with its own fan base, right? But there's sort of two conversations to be had here, right? One this didn't is exist in the no, I agree, people, man. Brother, the Phantom I, came out, people hated it. That like that no one was like, "You're this and this." It's like, no, dude, I just didn't like Jar Jar. I didn't like this and that. It, yeah. That's what people were saying. I, it's just 100%. some new new age thing that didn't exist back then. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And I think that again, I do think it's two conversations though, because the one is how do you navigate the modern era where that's absolutely a thing and social media plays a huge part in it right so the one is like a sort of public relations uh discussion the other side of it is just making good movies because i mean let me ask you this if all these movies were straight bangers do you think we'd be having the same discussions about politics i don't think we would i think if these movies were all fire there might be some sort of fringe you know discussions about this sort of stuff but I think by and large, you would have way less squeaky wheels. You would have way less people being upset about it. The way I viewed Star Wars, the breakdown of the sort of the creation of a lot of anti-Star Wars people, right? Regardless of what you call these folks. I think in all honesty, some of these folks literally when they said they were sort of killing legends, when they said, hey, legends, it still exists, but it's not canon. You know, now we're going to create canon stories and everything's going to be canon, right? right? I think that turned off, you know, a small portion of fans, but a very passionate portion of fans. But it wasn't until maybe after, okay, so then Force Awakens comes out, right? Some people didn't like it. All of a sudden, these two people find each other at the school dance. The people that didn't like the fact that they killed legends, they find a new dancing partner and the person that didn't like what they did to Han in uh, Force Awakens. Then all of a sudden, you 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 start to form this group of people that have all sorts of different issues with the movies. And the thing Lucasfilm does is says, hey, you see all those people over there that crowded at the edge of the high school dance? They're all bigots. You know what I'm saying? It was the dumbest, literally one of the, it will go down theory as one of the worst public relations strategies I've ever seen a brand do ever. And by the way, this is not about politics. This is about being generalizing. This is about not being open to the reality of the situation and being caught in this weird social media game where it's just as simple as they thought that those were bad guys. Uh, and that the good people were the people that liked their product. It's so arrogant. It's so pigheaded. It created a lot of the problems that we're in right now. I agree. It's this generalization. It's this brush that they, you know, put on the whole fandom for you know if if hey if you're not literally dude if you're not with me then you're my enemy. That's kind oh, of what they do. That is exactly what that. they did. And I just don't. There should have been an adult in the room. There should have been an adult that came forward and said. Hey, some people don't like these movies. Some people like them. We are trying to please as many Star Wars fans as we possibly can. We are massive Star Wars fans ourselves, and we love all the Star Wars fans. And we hope that if you don't like what we've done so far, that we have some project coming up that you will absolutely love because we care about you. But that's not what they did, right? That's not the that's that's just that wasn't the strategy, bro. You know what no, I'm saying? No, it's you know it's and and it's put a lot of pressure on fans and the fandom in general, and uh, it's. I just wish it wasn't so. I wish you could just, you know, debate why you didn't like this movie and it doesn't have to be so emotional in the sense. And don't get me wrong, Star Wars is very emotional, but it doesn't have to be thrown in with, you know, you're a, a shitty person if mm. you don't like this movie because you probably then have these and these and these values that don't coincide with my values, which makes you garbage. And it's like, then you get the inverse of that on the other side. Mm. Yeah. It's like, we're all just dudes. We're all just, well, we're all just dudes and dudettes on this planet. You know, we're just enjoying this franchise and i don't think it's really that deep where we 
uh, may not like something, and that means that you know we have this string of other things that are uh, put on right. our record too. It's it's all it's all part of the same report card. You know what I mean? Like you do one yeah. thing, and then it's boom, bad marks the whole way down. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, ridiculous. Man, it's you know. So I just hope one day you know the fandom can look past that and be like, hey, it's 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 not so intricate. It's just maybe they didn't like the movie. right right and i think i think it would be a great place to be at as a fan base where essentially look i'm not saying you can't defend kathy kennedy you absolutely defend kathy kennedy you can defend whoever you want you know i i, I believe in freedom of speech absolutely I, I do wish that some fans that perhaps had been more defensive around the time of the sequels that were really really you know, would, would sort of over defend her or, or make people feel bad or generalize. I, I do wish some of those folks would realize that there are a ton of people that are not your enemy. They're not, uh, you know, they don't have all these evil attributes. They just frankly think she is not doing that great of a job. And uh, I, I do wish there was a little bit more of an acknowledgement from the Star Wars fans of, hey, man, I do think things should be better. You know what I mean? Like, here's the deal. Like, I know some fans out there, like, I can almost feel some of these fans, like, particularly Star Wars Santa, right? Like, I can feel these people out there being like, look, Boba Fett, Book of Boba Fett's going to be awesome. Bad Batch was awesome. You know, before that, Mando Season 2 was awesome. How can we be complaining about all of these, you know, different things? I think that while that is fair, you just, at this point, can't deny, like, do you feel good about Patty Jenkins you know, splitting up. Do you feel good that after three years of time off, they still have to streamline a movie for 2023 and we have no idea what it's going to be? Do you yeah. feel good that we had no announcements on May the 4th and then on Disney Plus Day, they basically took a big old poop on our cereal? Like, <laughs> I, I don't know what it's going to well, take. Hey, as you said, maybe, maybe you know, D23 is going to have a little something. True, true. We can hope. We can definitely hope. We'll see what happens. But that being said, you know, Clone Wars was amazing, as I saw in the Super Chat just a, a minute ago. Clone Wars was amazing. Um, Mando was amazing. You know, Bad Batch was great. Yeah. It's like there are projects that she does have her name on that are good. And my question is, and again, I'm not saying anything is factual here. From my, I'm just giving you my opinion as the, the 25, 2600 people watching right now that are just Star Wars fans as well. Right. I don't have the answers. I'm just literally no better or worse than any of you guys. I'm just a kid who grew up loving Star Wars and connecting with it. And my thoughts on it are, was she having the same amount of power that she had, you know, during the sequel trilogy that she has on these new shows? You know, what is the, what is the that's a great there? question? Because these ones know. were so divisive, but yet Mando and Clone Wars were so not divisive where I would say 99% of people really loved them. I would agree. There's something to be said about that. I absolutely agree. And I think that it's a fair question. And as fans, like that should be a question that's okay to ask, guys. Like it should be okay to be like, hey, here's a bunch of stuff I really like. Here's a bunch of stuff that didn't work well. What's the deal, Janio? Like, is is she like should she fall back? Essentially is the question. Should she fall back? Whether or not she retains the title of president, I think what we're really saying is in the name of the content being better. Perhaps she shouldn't micromanage it to the point where Patty Jenkins says, nah, fam, I'm out. And you know she had a passionate story. We know she had something she really wanted to tell. Dude, people love Star Wars. A lot of the people that are in Hollywood right now, successful, Star Wars inspired them. Star Wars is the reason they started to chase their dreams. Everybody wants to take a crack at Star Wars. We need to be able to let creative people come into Star Wars and do creative things. Star Wars needs to freshen it up. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's a it's a weird thing. Do you want me to send a link uh, out to the council? Said, I'm sure you send it out to the council. We can see what they want to say. Uh, that being said, while you do that, I think Star Wars is going to be the best it's ever been, regardless of, you know, whatever people want to think, you know, Kathleen Kennedy being assigned for another three years or not. I think Star Wars is literally going to be the best it has ever been since the sequel trilogy. Hmm. Um, and I know, and this isn't to say that, oh, you know, uh, sorry, since the prequel trilogy, and I know this isn't to say, um, that the sequels weren't exciting in their own right, but they were very divisive. Yeah, they were. And, and a lot of people really liked them and a lot of people didn't like them. So uh, collectively, 
when fans were more united was, well, I guess I could even go back to the original trilogy. Maybe that was even more of a uh, unanimous time in Star Wars where fans were like, this was really awesome. But I even think that the prequel trilogy had a certain level of magic to it back then that the ones who really loved it really did love it. Um, like me. I loved all of them. Yeah. Um, but I think that will return again. I think, you know, with these new slew of shows in 2022, I think this will be the year for Star Wars. And hopefully we'll never look back. Yeah, I I certainly am excited at the possibilities that are out there. And especially like you always say, like when it comes to John and Dave, for sure. When it comes to Kenobi, for sure. There is a part of me, though, and this is sort of the last like big point that I want to make. And I guess like I'll try to I'll, I'll try to get a little more positive after this. Right. But, you know, a lot of what we're talking about, and I think when you're saying Star Wars is going to be better than it's ever been, a lot of that is coming out on Disney Plus. Right. Like, let's just be real. Right. Yeah. A lot of the future for Star Wars is happening on Disney Plus. So to me, I really don't understand how on Disney Plus Day, your chance to sort of stick that flag in the ground and get a lot of people to understand that, yes, the, the future of Star Wars is incredibly bright and it's going to happen on Disney Plus and here's all the juicy stuff. Hmm. Why do you back off the way that you did? You know what I mean? Like, I, I, tr I really don't understand it. And I, I, I don't, I, I just frankly don't. Like, even if they do show it at, at D23 coming up, then there's just all sorts of stupid there. Like, then why didn't you save the Boba Fett trailer, which came out like a week ago? Why don't you save that for Disney Plus Day? You know what I'm saying? Like, what? There's clearly yeah, it's just, yeah. it's it's a scramble. It feels like a scramble, and like that's just not a comfortable place to be as a as a company, man. You know, like, look, say what you will about Marvel. Like Marvel right now, they're having a shaky start to their Phase Four. Hundred percent, I would agree with people that say that. A little shaky start, but look at the pedigree. Look at the content. Look at what they've been able to put out. It's crazy. That's the new world that we live in. And Star Wars is is arguably a more valuable IP. So what are they doing? Taking three years to sign talent that they can't work with to make a movie? Like It's very frustrating to me. Yeah. I agree with you that the future is bright. But in this exact moment, I'm just finding it personally difficult to look past my frustration with this with this move with with the bad news and uh with the prospect of three more years of this regime you know what i'm saying like it just it's a tough one it's a bold yeah, move i i don't want her to be in charge of star wars but if it's going to be with john and dave at the helm i really don't care who's in charge hmm. yeah doesn't matter to me yeah i uh I, I hope we get some clarity to it for real for real. Like I hope there's some clarity to the whole situation soon because I, I think That'd there's nice. yeah. But here, Chaco will come Yo, and save us, save us from this tumbling of negativity. <laughs> What's up, bro? From uh, our toxicity. Will will I? I, I? I don't know. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I felt know. I'm not gonna lie, I felt pretty numb on Disney Day myself. Um and I I have hope that they were like, you know what, this is Disney Plus Day um we we're we're gonna save some of our best stuff that's a years out for celebration uh because we, we want to yeah. hit that hard that's 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 what i'm praying i i yeah. hope that's what what happened at like they're like okay there's they're not doing like a live thing where there's a presentation we walk on stage so we'll just we'll just like chill for a bit um but uh, also another thing is like Star Wars is, is not is not Marvel. Like we're we're not at that level of, of um, frequency of, of content yet. Mm -hmm. And part of me is like, am I am I being am I spoiled now? Mm -hmm. Because you know, like last year they announced a bunch of stuff, and that's it. One one is not a good sample size to say like yeah, you missed the pattern. You know, yeah. but I yeah, <sighs> I think they got a higher than. The marketing team they hired for the last jedi i think you know whoever was in charge of marketing for that movie needs to be marketing everything else going forward yeah it was good marketing and, and i would agree with Chaco that that december 10th thing last year that was i actually remember i gave her a lot of credit for that actually because it wasn't just 
all that they announced she brought great energy to that thing man like she literally like she she had good stuff to say there was a swagger about how much cool stuff was coming out i was like all right kathy like that's literally the best i've i mean it's clearly scripted and probably written by yeah. kevin feige but I, it was like you did good you did good this has been a weird couple of weeks man and and just all culminating in that disney plus day uh you know situation man and it's just like i don't know how as a star wars fan like that sizzle reel is a year old you know what i mean like that is a year old there were leaked descriptions of that from that december 10th thing from last year so i just i really don't yeah it doesn't it doesn't give me a lot of confidence you know what i mean and and I'm I'm crushed about the the whole Patty Jenkins thing because I I freaking loved the X Wing books, um and and I assume like this is slam dunk right because they're, they're re putting out the X Wing books right now and on top of that Alphabet Squadron the middle book was 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 kind of garbage but the third book hit hit it out of the park it did, like yeah. just was amazing and I'm like and I I need some more love for our pilots and stuff out there but. Oh my goodness, this is one of those things that just goes back and forth and back and forth in my mind because you're like, okay, yes, there was, you know, people, a lot of people looked at The Force Awakens and said they played it too safe. Um, mm -hmm. They played, they did The Last Jedi and thought Ryan Johnson got too wide range to, to work with. I mean, I love the film myself, not yeah. everyone does. Um, and and then uh, I felt Rise of Skywalker was very reactionary based off of that. But since then, if like chronologically after Rise of Skywalker, I feel like we we have mostly gotten bangers. But mm -hmm. in, there are some things that didn't super sit well with me. I enjoyed Bad Batch, but it didn't like knock my socks off. My socks were very much on. Uh, certain episodes of Visions truly did, though. Yeah. Um. So I think things are. Uh, things have been trending, uh, trending positively um, since then, and I, I don't, I don't know. I go, I go back and forward. Now, I, as far as like defending Kathleen Kennedy, the only thing I say to people is, let's blame her for things that she's done, because I see a lot of like random stuff, just random hate that's like spraying from for the hip. Um, but yeah, I think ideally I would like, you know, let her say president, have someone else be executive producer on things. Yeah. Chaco, do you think, I just want to know, do you think, cause I, I assume, did you hear my point about, um, how I think in some ways the narrative about the job she's doing is hijacked by the sort of, you know, culture war or toxic, non-toxic, uh, kind of discussion and I actually think it does a huge disservice to just sort of what I consider to be a pretty object reality of just not doing as good of a job as you would hope right like I don't know what do you think about that yeah I, I was listening to that part and I part of me thinks that um, where I kind of go with it is there's there's just too much noise out there there's so much hate and vitriol that is often not placed correctly. Yes, there are, there are valid complaints to have for everything, for all the movies mm. and stuff like that. But there's a lot of just random stuff that's just spraying out everywhere. And I think there's so much noise that they effectively just hit mute. Sorry, there's, there's so many of these crazy channels. You know, I've seen videos about Kathleen Kennedy being fired every day for like four years. And it's all like weird stuff. I can't, who I think they should listen to the fan base, but who do they listen to? And yeah, you know, I, I don't, yeah. I think there's so much noise. Oh, dude, like, and I just, I totally agree with that. And it's actually one of the like things I would often say to people because, like, you know, I have friends on sort of that side of the aisle or people that are that actually make a living off of like, saying that Kathy Kennedy is going to get fired. Some of these people I actually like really like as a human being, but I'm like, I really and truly feel like you're doing a disservice to this thing. And it's almost like this, this sort of algorithm pushy thing, because then Lucasfilm actually, like you said, they just mute. Like they can't actually take then any criticism seriously. And it's almost like a crying wolf uh, situation. Like if you're going to, 
you know, go crazy about every little thing she does. How can they take anything you're saying, you know, as a fan base seriously? So. Yeah. And then, sorry, just one, one last point is I, I know there's, there's complaints about a lot of things being political. I think a big part of that is just what has happened in this country, <laughs> in, in the United States um, for the last couple of years and people injecting, like, I, I think politics in the United States have gotten a lot more polarized than they were before. Yeah. And so it's rather than having conversation, there's, there's two, there's a vast, the gap between the sides of the aisle has like become a chasm mm -hmm. and somehow it's bled into star wars we're like you're yeah. on that side that means you're this and that and this and it's like okay that means you're all these things and then there's people like me like i just i just want to watch movies and stuff yeah totally i'm just gonna answer this real quick uh yeah uh Callista, i made a video a while ago when i uh hit i think two million subs and it's like an hour long video you can go through it um yeah essentially i started on a smartphone it's all you need what do the ladies think of this whole situation? Um, which one of the many situations? So let's start with That's just okay. baseline. Kathy uh, extending her contract for three years. I mean, it really just depends how much control she has over it, right? I mean, I, I just... I mean, I'm not a fan of her work all the time, but there have been great projects that have come out, but it's usually due to Dave Filoni and, and John. So as long as the right people are in control of the projects, I'm good. She can like watch from the side or whatever, but I don't want her to have too much control. I don't so know. what's your take, Sawyer? I mean, I'm not surprised. Like when you, like when we were talking earlier, like, didn't it wasn't it last year that they said she wasn't going anywhere or something yep. like that wasn't that long ago so i'm not I like was i wasn't right i wasn't shocked to hear that um i think I, I don't know i mean we'll have to see we we talked i think it was last week we talked about rogue squadron getting pushed back and you know what's the deal with that why are they doing that and to me it seems like disney <laughs> I hope it seems like Disney knows where their strengths are in Star Wars right now, which is Mandalorian and hopefully Kenobi and all those things. If they stick down that path, I don't think it'll be a huge problem. Mm. Um, it seems like just like I mean, Chaga was talking about how the Rise of Skywalker was in response to the divisiveness of The Last Jedi and that backfired for them they thought they were doing that to fix what people didn't like about the last jedi that epically backfired for them and they the mandalorian's been so successful the book of boba fett looks really good so i think i don't know i don't want to sit here and be like uh oh because it, it right now it seems like they're aware that they're you know treading this really fine line with a lot of the fans so eh, that's where i'm at I think that's a fair take. I think, um, yeah, I mean, like, I'm not necessarily surprised that she's staying around. I guess I'm partially surprised just at the timing. Like, that's my thing is like, I'm like, what is this about? You know what I mean? Like, it's not like, like, I, yeah, I just, I, I, I'm confused how you have a story of sort of like DJ Khaled would say, like, another one, you know? And then they're like, but, She's here for three more years. You know what I mean? So it's just like a weird sort of back and forth on it, in my opinion. KK is still there because of corporate politics around her residuals of her shows, films, and block her from new content. Dave Filoni may not want to be the president. We are so quick to volunteer him, but he may not want that for his career. Yeah, I don't think Dave Filoni wants to be president. I don't think John wants to be president either. And I don't think they should be president. I want them making stories. I want exactly. I, want, I, I love them where they are right now because mm -hmm. what's happening, what's been happening, and let's let's not forget that you know Kathleen was involved in that. And now yes. she gets to people that she knows she can trust and say, Hey, you guys do your thing. And then they bring on 
directors for the different episodes of The Mandalorian, and they see we've worked with these directors, we trust them, let's give them projects, let's give them Obi-Wan, let's give them Book of Boba Fett. And we have this web that's kind of spreading. Um, and I, like I said before, I was I was really sad to lose, you know, um, you know, Rogue Squadron. But at the end of the day, though, uh, we, we we don't know exactly what those differences were. You know, um, Solo had a bunch of changes, but you know, Alden Ehrenreich said he felt like Ace Ventura before, mm -hmm. and I, I don't know if that if that would have played well. I, I don't know if that was a good decision or a bad decision. It seems really. Like to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's um, a big rumor. Yeah, wow. Um, yeah. So like, I, I it's 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 hard to say, but maybe you know how how much planning should there be? Should there be a ton of planning or no planning? If someone doesn't fall in line with a plan, you give them, you let them roll with it. Weren't we just mad of not having the most planning? I, I, I it just. It I just mean, look, that's a fair. That's a fair point because, like, it is true to say that one of the issues was we were like, oh, they didn't have a plan, and seemingly you can make the argument that breaking up, uh, you know, the the rogue squadron thing, or, or or making a decision because this isn't within our plan, you could make the argument that that falls under the umbrella of having a plan. The problem is then why do you green light and announce and move forward on a movie only to then say, hey, this isn't going to work within our plan. Why isn't that meeting number one, bro? Why isn't that meeting number one? We have a plan. Here's the plan. By the way, we'd love to have you. You're amazing, but you'd have to fall within this purview. You know what I mean? Like it's like I get what you're saying, but it doesn't excuse what is happening. You know, again, I think one of the big. It, but yeah. Marvel Marvel did it. And I feel like, you know, when Marvel first made the big announcement, what year was that? 2012, something like that, of like phase two, and they announced all these movies and all this stuff. Not all of it panned out. Ant-Man sure. got dumped and like kicked serpent around. Serpent Society. Like a there was a Serpent Society movie <laughs> that they never made. Yeah. Uh Inhumans became a TV show, and then that was, was bad. Poopy. And there is uh there's a bunch of things that got changed around and stuff like that after those original initial announcements. I, I, I see this as par for the course, but I think that we've seen so much content come out of Marvel that we just expect that and we aren't going to get that. But I, I don't know. I I don't have the answers. I'm just I'm just throwing ideas. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, I think that it's a good point. My only sort of rebuttal would be that if you ask people that have worked on Marvel movies they talk about how incredible the experience is like there's a desire from a creative perspective and from an actor's perspective to go want to make those products like how many times do we see actors lobbying you know what i mean to like get into a marvel movie or a director saying they'd love to do a, a marvel film i just think that the danger we're facing and maybe it's a danger that for the casual fan isn't as obvious but i think the danger is you're going to get to a point where i mean to be completely frank like why would you want to go make star wars stuff at this point other than your love of star wars if you think about it from a career perspective <laughs> from a director's perspective first of all it's like are you just going to waste your time you know what i mean if you think about it from an actor's perspective are you just going to be a part of a thing that's going to be very divisive and toxic do people want that you know what i mean i think part of your job as a leader is to create an environment in which people actually want to come work for you like the, you you want to set up a system or, or, or something that is desirable that way you attract the most talent you know what i mean you attract really really great talent so Wars is in like the sort of the opposite side of that and, and i just think that it's I think it's wildly different than Marvel. It's like, although, yeah, like totally, they're they are certainly not perfect. And I would argue the beginning of Phase Four is sort of showing how imperfect uh, Marvel Studios can be. But I still think, if you just look at the sort of uh, wide girth of content and where I think the majority of that content will fall, as far as critically and um, with audiences, they're just playing at a totally different level. He is playing at a totally different level than she mm -hmm. is. You know. It sucks. I agree. So we clone Feige. Bro, um, or just let the man make his movie. Let <laughs> the man make his Star Wars movie. He's juggling 30 projects. You're telling me he can't do one more and put some people he trusts in and make a good movie? I mean, come on, bro. That's crazy. 
Ooh. Didn't JJ not want to do episode nine because he was too afraid of the backlash? Dude, uh, the plot thickens. I just want to throw this in, and then I'm going to go pee. But uh, y'all know Steve Frosty wine trope? Does anybody know yeah. Frosty? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, he's yeah. boys it's with Mark Kleiner. and all that. Yeah, yeah of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. So apparently he just had a tweet, which he's now deleted, and apparently the tweet said something about not hearing that Kennedy's contract was renewed, but she was removed from a lot of projects. So throw that into the mix, and now I'm going to go pee. So her power is stripped perhaps which is essentially i mean sounds like what i was saying of her being president but not executive but like not being, yeah which is fine as dude as i don't really care who's president as long as john and dave are handling everything and, and they're getting people like deborah chow and bryce dallas howard and taika and all those talented people in there so i don't care <laughs> but obviously yeah in my opinion i don't really think she should be handling star wars at all anymore but uh if those peeps are around, time is over. Her time is over. That's an end, your room is. People. Yeah. I think people. so, too. Yeah, time to bring someone new in. What is this? I mean, I Maybe feel like, like you know, a, after... another diehard Star Wars fan. <laughs> what is that? I think Venom. Yeah, I was boy. trying to read that, too, just because I'm a massive Venom fan. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> so what's up with you guys? Did you have a nice week? Weekend? Um, yeah, it's like normal. I got a job, so that's good. Oh, Yay. cool. Nice. Yeah, I get to make money because <laughs> I've been spending it, but am I making it? <laughs> Are you not making money on, uh, what should we call it, TikTok? No. You, guys, you Americans can make, Canadians can't make money on TikTok. Yeah, but it's not very much. <laughs> it, yeah, first of all, it's not very much. Second of all, if you join the creator fund, it like makes your views go like down. So it just, it's a mess. So that's why yep. we don't do that. I see. But then like, what about, uh, what's that chick? She's got like 50 million followers. Oh yeah. No, those people make a lot of money. But, no, those um, people are a little bit different. <laughs> They're a little it's, bit different. It is, it's an entirely different ball game. Right now, the cool thing about TikTok is, is the brand exposure. Uh, yeah. You end mm -hmm. up with a lot of, lot of different brands and stuff reaching out to you and like shocking ways you know yeah i've noticed that it's definitely uh it's definitely easy easy to grow on there for sure it is easy to grow i gotta admit i mean like my boy the straw hat goofy and then jay stoops out oh there. my god I, I, had, I had stoops on my podcast at like six thousand followers now she's at the eternals premiere and all the stuff i'm like damn i should have done a marvel account <laughs> <laughs> It's wild. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Josh, are you in LA? No, sir. I'm on the East Coast. Josh, I'm LA? On the East Coast. That doesn't no. Nice. No, I mean, I'd maybe go to visit or whatever. I mean, I'm more of a like a New York East Coast kind of guy. Like I really like uh like Chicago, Boston, New York, Philly. And those are like the real America to me. So uh, California, cool to visit. Some of these other places, cool to visit. But uh, yeah, I don't know if it would be my thing. That's fair. That's fair. I'm, I'm a Ravens guy myself. Are you in LA? Oh, Baltimore? Yeah. Right. Nice, dude. I had a lot of good... Uh, when I was in Philly, I had a lot of good friends that came from Baltimore area. So yeah. Is anyone here in LA? I I'm in San Diego. Oh, okay. So a couple hours. I've never been. I'm going to be in San Diego in the spring. Let's kick it. I'll let you know. Yeah. I'm hoping to be in Anaheim for Star Wars Celebration. Yes. Yes. That'll yes, be yes. super fun. And then hopefully, like, what if they just come out and show that same sizzle reel of Kenobi or something? <laughs> <laughs> so we're all just like, what are you doing? What if they saw that we were expecting a Kenobi thing and they're just like, you know what? Now we're not going to give it to them. Well, one of the theories yeah. was that they were trying to catch a leaker. But I'm like, that is the stupidest way to do that. Like, that's that's ridiculous. Okay. Like, they were trying to catch a leaker. How are they trying? That they, were, they basically, like, tried to shut it down. Like, they spread – this is a, a rumor. I don't actually buy it. But that they were spreading false information 
about all these things that were going to happen on Disney Plus Day to see who would spread it, to see where it would come from, and then oh. isolate a leaker and something like that, and destroy them. Yeah, for sure. Is that know. an episode of The Office? You tell a bunch of random people different rumors, and you see which one. <laughs> Yeah, disinformation campaigns. I mean, like it can. I mean, it's. Let me just say this: if they're going at that great of a length and being that creative to catch leakers, you got to show me a little something more in your content because that is a huge disparity. I mean, that's kind of cool. It's kind of a fun idea, but could you could you make the movies you say you're going to make? That would also be a cool idea. You know, a little more in line with uh, what you're supposed to do as a studio. Uh, MK Matt, I did a video on this. Uh, what if Anakin fought Grievous? But I could do a fanfic on what if Anakin went to Utapau. I think that would be interesting. Do you guys think Anakin could kill Grievous? Yeah, I think so. Well, of course you do. To kill Grievous? <laughs> hey. yeah. Towards the end, yeah, absolutely. So, I, I, Anakin I go... can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I go, I go Not back and biased. forth with it because. Um, but mostly because I'm still stuck in the Matthew Stover novelization, which is Thanks, Maria. one of the greatest pieces of literature, in my opinion. <laughs> but the way the council explains why they sent Obi-Wan and the way Obi-Wan was described to beat him in the novelization, I feel like he might have been the only person that, which one? that truly could. The Revenge of the Sith novelization? Yeah, from Matthew Stover, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was reading a portion of it again last night, and I was like, "This is so beautiful." This is actually, yeah, it's like better than the movie. It, a lot of the time, books are better. <laughs> yeah, there's just more in there. Mm -hmm. There's just more. You stuff. get to see it. It's like more in depth. You get to see like every thought because you can see it on their face, but you can't like genuinely know what they're thinking. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, I think so. Especially that novelization where it goes into like. Dooku's mind seconds before he's gonna be uh, a head shorter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, he, and he's just like, the hell? And like, he explains why he's so confused. It was such an honor to be able to talk to him and like kind of pick at his brain a little bit. And uh, he made me realize some stuff about the sequel trilogy too, which I had never, Mark and I had never thought of before. Which was cool. Matt Stover is who made me want to write. Mm. So. Has he done any like non Star Wars stuff? Like, is there like a series or something? Uh, I he has. I haven't read it, but like, okay, right on. Hey, his, it, but his work on uh, on on Shatterpoint uh, first, and then the novelization. Um, just the way it was written was just like you know. I, I want to write, and I'm I'm working on my own um, IPs, so we'll see. How nice, that dude. Cool. Me too. Well, can we hear more about it tonight for the first time? Nice, dude. Yeah, we got to get on that comic someday too, Josh. I know. I'm a dude. I'm full steam ahead on uh, a comic project that I'm working on right now. I'm actually really excited about it. Um, but uh, yeah, I actually got to link up with the artist who did the first comic I ever did, and so it's like kind of a, it's kind of I don't know. It's kind of a, it's magical, bro. Like because when me and this dude were making books before, like we didn't know anything. We were dead broke and. You know, we, we made some cool books, but uh, like now it's like years later and I feel like it just feels good to like kind of get the band back together. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And so, yeah, uh, I can't wait. I can't wait to read it, dude. I'm telling you, I, I I think it's pretty good, man. I think it's it's really, really fun. A lot of cool characters. Um, yeah, it's going to be cool. I'm excited. Quite pumped. No lightsabers, though. <laughs> well, I'm glad you like the show, man. Yeah. Um, hey, YouTube will always be here, regardless. So, sorry, Apple. You were doing something on Apple before. Yeah, I was doing Apple, Spotify. Still am. Just building some episodes right now, and then releasing. Hmm. Planning to bring back Rule of Two at some point. Josh is a hard. Uh, uh, Mark is a hard man to get a hold of. Yeah, he's out on boats. He's out on boats. Doing wild things in the, what, what do they call it? The Bayou? Bayou? I don't even know. What is y'all favorite expanded universe era, story, or characters? You're not familiar with the EU, the canon verse. For me, um, you know what? It, I really like the Darth Bane era, which I 
I can't say that's for the old public, but uh, it's like a little after. I would say, but lately I'm, I'm really interested in uh, just a little bit before The Phantom Menace. I think it's a really cool time, and uh, I'm excited for Acolyte. Oh, yeah, that's going to be so good. Yeah. I'm going to enjoy looking at the Jedi. You have, you, have you read Master and Apprentice? Yes. Yeah, it's hot. Yes. so hot right now. <laughs> I, I like Dooku Jedi Lost a little more. Mm, that's that fair. Mean... Both yeah. with uh, Ray Lavaros. Both, Both very good, yeah. Ray Lavaros is a G, man. Ray Lavaros is uh, Josh. <laughs> maybe, maybe in my younger days, you know. I always like to say Rail Avaros is aptly named because not because he rails. <laughs> Rail and yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> He's a uh, wild bull, man. I would have loved to see more of that character for sure. Chaco forgot Windu used to be the reason Grievous had baby lungs in Episode Three. Thoughts on how the open world gameplay for Kotaro and Ubisoft will differ? How did Chaco forget? Uh, I never forget that. Shoot, um, that's about why Drake, Mace Windu was was one of my favorite characters. Uh, just, just real quick though, uh, w as far as the the Legends and stuff era, um, I go back and forth between Old Republic and um, and the Legacy of the Force stuff. You know, my Jaina Solo is still my all time favorite Star Wars character, um, and super slept on Saba Sabatine is just a mm. big lizard with a lightsaber, and she's amazing. <laughs> um, there's a lot of really cool stuff, a lot of weird, weird stuff, an eyeball like ship. That's named ship. Um, that's a Sith meditation spear. I don't know. There's, Whoa, there's some that cool seems stuff. fun. That'd be kind of fun. I was gonna say Knights of the Eternal Throne is probably my favorite EU story. So like, uh, what's the Emperor Vitiate? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Yo, man. He's he's what the love of my life, and he would kill me, but it's okay. <laughs> are, we, are you gonna get a computer, and we'll stream uh, Swotor? I can't afford one, Chaco. <laughs> okay. um, Would love to. I did buy Kotor for my Switch though, because it was only fifteen dollars. So that's cool. I'll play with Callus. Yes, sir. Yasha's diet in the Force <laughs> says, uh, "Would love to see Kathy move into more of a figurehead type role these next three years, so John and Dave can take over as the real Senate." Yeah, I like I like that. She seems cute too. Uh, need advice. I'm planning my first trip to Galaxy's Edge in February. I need tips and tricks and how and things to look out for. Also, what needs to happen for a nerd council live appearance? The council is the highlight of my week. Oh, well, so happy to have you here, man. Um, you guys are more versed in Galaxy's Edge than I am. I've only been there a few times, so Sawyer's feel free to answer the <laughs> champion. Um, tips and tricks, things to look out for February. Okay, well, they're doing meet and greets again. They're a little bit. They're like distanced i think but they are doing more like closer character interactions so be on the lookout for that um they're i think they'll be walking around more often than they have been um if you can book your reservations for lightsabers and droids and the cantina now um there is yeah. i believe there is a website that if you pay like five dollars, they'll send you a text if there's a cancellation at the cantina, and I think that's worth it because it's hard to get into, and like they pop up all the time. So I that would be my biggest advice because I think the cantina, especially for adults, is the best part of Galaxy's Edge. Um, the other thing I would say is um, go if you're going to Disney World, go early in the morning, the day you go to Star Wars Land because it's there's no longer like that stupid virtual queue now you wait in the line for rise of the resistance wait in the line but go early <laughs> so you're not waiting five hours those are you my those are my tips you don't want to miss rise of the resistance no to, to answer that previous question um i find lords of the sith to be a very polarizing book hmm i i i hate that book like the, the opening, hate that book the opening what? is amazing, but having them just kill bugs and stuff it just wasn't it for me. I just dude, I back know. to back, Palpatine and Vader killing like I imagined it like um, what was that crazy movie with the bugs? It's like a meme. I'm <laughs> I'm doing my part. Uh, Starship Star Troopers. Hell yeah! I imagine yeah. I like Starship Troopers <laughs> with Vader and Palpatine. That'd be pretty cool. 
A Plague of Story preference movie or TV show? TV show. TV show. Yeah. TV show. 100%. Isn't it funny how that's happened Creepy now? Creepy TV I feel show, like that's... though. Yeah, oh yeah. It needs to be oh, yeah. dark. Bro, like, you're right. Young Yo, Plagueis you making kids jump out of windows? Uh, like, <laughs> What do you think about Palpatine having been Plagueis the entire time? Mm, I don't necessarily like that, but I would love maybe Plagueis f- still being around and watching all this go down. And being like, yeah, like now, Snoke like was. now yeah. is my time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or but, like, I mean, I'm just saying, like when Plagueis, when Palpatine killed Plagueis, what if Plagueis did the whole thing and like now transferred his essence mm. into Palpatine? And uh, could be there. I mean, it could be. Plagueis did go try to see Anakin in Phantom Menace. Really? Is that in the novel? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. I just, I just love the end of the novel too much of. Palpatine being like, remember this part of the book that you all read? Yeah, I I manipulated you into thinking that I've been. I know, right? (laughs) And you're just like, oh shoot, he's a monster. Yeah, it'd be a twist, but I don't think it would be. I don't think it would be really good. I think it would just change change too much. I went to Galaxy's Edge when it first opened. It felt so isolated, and that I couldn't do much about practically anything. But that's just me. Still enjoyed seeing the ships. Now that was cool. It's definitely cool. The only thing I, you know, it gets sort of, it's you know what, man, it's fun being there. Even though it's not about the originals or prequels, uh, it's always fun being there, and it's it's an experience because it does feel like you're in a Star Wars type of land. Uh, that being said, I think they could have really capitalized on you know so much more with having different worlds in the actual park. And manipulating, you know, the weather, like going in Hoth and it's like super cold and snowing, yeah. going in Mustafar and it's hot. And, you know, they're selling freezies. I think that would be sweet. <laughs> and you can what ride happened? on those bugs. Uh, <laughs> from, what do you from, think from about, the, um, and I'm talking, I don't know if anyone else re- has read it. I know you have theory um, about the fact that they're not, or they didn't mention Xana in in this new uh sith book when they're speaking about the rule of two and darth bane you know oh, yeah. what i'm talking about and they don't yeah. mention and they have the opportunity to mention xana and they don't i'm like what what is the reason for that maybe accolade i don't know maybe they're gonna change some stuff up that would suck though because she was badass i i hope that it, that like you're saying i hope that the, the reason is is because she may be the <laughs> acolyte or she may have something to do with acolyte but I hope they're not erasing her and starting over. I often think or leaving about Darth her in the Bane, dust. About when Darth Bane first met her, like he he's walking along and then he just sees a bunch of Jedi who were just absolutely obliterated with the force. <laughs> yeah. And there's just this little girl standing there with her like little bouncy friend and oh, she's it's... crying. And he's like, what? Duh. <laughs> 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 Yeah. <That's> crazy. <laughs> Come with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. I will train you in the ways of the force. <laughs> yeah, man. They gotta uh, turn all that stuff into shows. That's the way to do it. Yeah. I always say too much to the tell. first Bane book, Path of Destruction, would need to be a trilogy by itself. Uh-huh. There's too much. There's way too much. Yeah. I agree. I agree, man. Yeah, there's like there's definitely three parts to that. I think the whole part with like the war at the end that can be like a whole part itself. Yeah, hmm. way, way dope part. Be, those would be some fun. That'd be some fun content, man. Yeah, which you know, kind of confuses me is like they know it's like it almost makes me wonder if they really know that they could make so much money on that and they could bring us so much joy and entertainment by you know making all a lot of these books into shows or movies. Yeah. Why not? Why not? I got nothing. It's already there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bro, it's, yeah. It's, we're like practically begging for it. That's the other side of it. Like, it just feels like. Like, uh, take my money. Just. Yeah, dude. Like, make just. It. Yeah. So. Yo, Callus, what do you think? KK, three more years. Three more years. What do you think, bro? Speak on it, bro. <laughs> oh, man. Um, this is how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, oh, I'm just silent, man. It's, it, it's, it's kind of like it was. Ex- it didn't shock me 
to tell to tell you the truth like to, to hear it didn't shock me um you know I, i'm just hoping that uh if she's going to stay that her intention is to focus on on great content um you know i i don't know what else to say beyond that man it's like there's nothing that that we can do and she continues to to uh she's like i don't mean to be disrespectful but like you know how they say a cockroach will always survive the uh mm-hmm. that's what it's it's like everybody keeps counting her out and and she just keeps persevering i don't know man yeah it's wild that's why yeah. i wish people would let properties fail on their own merits yes agreed don't don't do campaigns of like i'm gonna downvote all of your movies before they come out because they look at that and they're like well we can't trust these ratings like, but that, yeah. you just destroyed the purpose of the rating <laughs> yeah yeah dude dude for sure there's a lot of like that kind of stuff going on like it just it 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 muddies up the messaging and all that. Like, I, I totally agree with that. I just think that like, it's sort of on them, like in, in the like strict business sense, like you're absolutely right. Like a lot of this is sort of hard to navigate, but that is like their job. Right. So I, I just think that it's weird to me that they're not, um, well, you know, I guess the, the more correct way to say it is it does not appear as though they have so far really, just been engaged with what the fans want i mean like it's just so weird man that they don't realize what people like <laughs> you know what i mean mm-hmm. like you're, you're supposed to be the, like you have like I, one of the best ips you know what's wow. the reason that like, what what i would just like maybe for i guess they don't really owe us any sort of explanation but it just just sort of something that's that highlights why it is that they continue to keep her around if if the world seems to believe that at least as far as star wars is concerned that she's failed so uh what is it that is is allowing for her to continue i mean i got a theory i don't know it's like conjecture but i think it actually comes down to a i think it is sort of it has sort of become a political thing and i think that the unfortunate truth is that some of her like most ardent retractors have actually sort of created a, a a weird situation in which Kathy can then go to, you know, whether it's Bob Iger or Bob Chapek or whomever, or, you know, Alan Horn's not around, but whomever, and literally say, I've been in this industry for 40 years. Uh, you know, I've been handpicked by George. I've been in charge of your company for a set amount of years. I will not go out. Uh, as a laughing stock in a day and age when a bunch of sexist, uh, horrible people are saying this, that, second, and the third. So she can sort of use the political moment to create a case for, because Disney does, generally speaking, try to take care of their own, right? They try to let people retire with dignity, and, and I think that they should. But I think that the, the bottom line is that I think it became an issue <laughs> Where, dude, yeah, that source material question, or you know, don't even get me started. I'm gonna get triggered. Well, but well, like, no, I, I was laughing at at, uh, at Bob Iger being like, "Oh, the market's down. I'm out." Dude, <laughs> oh, <for sure. laughs> well, he got out when he saw Roni, Rona, right? Like he saw that coming a mile away, and he was like, "I'm out, bro. Like this is JPEG. Good luck, you know." He played hot potato with Bob JPEG. <laughs> yeah, but I think that, that that would be my guess, bro. Is that like? it became something it shouldn't have been. It should have just been as simple as, hey, you know, this is a very valuable IP for us. I really don't think you're doing well. And it became the narrative of, like, think about this Think about this stream, bro. Think about this whole thing. Think about the videos that are going to be made. Think about the, the, the narrative is, you know, off with her head from a bunch of people that think she ruined Star Wars, and that has just become a political thing. Like, that, it, it, it shouldn't be. Um, but I think that's that's that would probably be my guess. Yeah, my whole thing is just just blame where it's due, and then there's there's so much noise that it's hard. Yeah, that's what I keep coming back to, but but I, I see it and I uh, and I get it. I mean, long story short, though, they they told us last year that she was going to be around still. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> for sure, but Choco, they've also told us that we were getting a Rogue Squadron movie. They told us a lot of things, you know? Yeah, it's it's a like, lot of stuff in the track. So it's like, yeah. what do you really take at face value anymore? Who knows? It's hard to say, man. I don't trust but, anything anymore. Look, I'm not convinced that she's actually son I'm not convinced that she's actually extended this contract. You know what I mean? Like that whole Steve Frosty Weintraub thing that apparently he deleted. Dude, that's weird. I got like I want to dig into this and I would not be here's the thing though. If it comes out that she is gone, then it's gonna be like, well, what was going on? last week the, when the stories were that she's extended when the stories were all of this sort of stuff it's like is she like again fighting in the press to try to make it a thing i don't know man this is this is this is mind bottling it, it, it kind of comes off of the heels of uh what is it maybe a week or two ago where we were uh where it, the internet was talking about the um color purple interview and using that as sort of the scapegoat for what she said about star wars right or, or kind of equating the two you know what i'm talking about i'm actually not familiar with the color purple interview i don't really know what that was people started there was a, a clip that were of kathleen sanity saying all these people that like hated this well it wasn't made for them and people were posting that as if oh, that was said for it uh, so the, like the, the the purple movie or whatever color yeah, the purple. Color purple. yeah. Exactly. it was actually an interview for the color purple but people were positioning it as if that's yeah what she so was they were they were trying, yeah yeah whatever Look, man, it's hard. I try to be charitable with people. I do think there are, uh, look, I think, that, bro, there are just some people that see things differently than me. And like, sometimes I hear people say things like that, or like Victoria Alonso just had this thing about the Eternals. And she kind of said, like, it, it, it's, it's hard to know for sure what she was getting at. You read it in print, you know, it's hard to get the context. But it kind of felt like what she was saying was, like, critics didn't like our movie because we went hard on diversity. And I'm like, no, fam, like that ain't it. And I really just feel like that framing is very problematic. But then again, it's like I'm just a dude that sees it the way I see it. She might actually see it that way. You know what I mean? Like she might literally see it that way that like that is a reality, even though to me there's really no evidence to support it. And I wonder if Kathy like legitimately does feel that she's not making content for a bunch of people that have been buying Star Wars toys for 40 plus odd years, and that's okay. Like, she might literally feel that way, which would be, like, insane to me. Like, literal Honestly. literal madness, you know? But I don't know. I don't know what's in her heart. You know, I, I, I can only get what or, she's saying or, in interviews and all that. Or maybe George told her, uh, just go full steam ahead and don't listen to anyone, because I wouldn't. I, I don't know. I'm not saying that she she is or she isn't. I'm just that's just devil's advocate. And I'm not saying it's a good or a bad thing. But I would I, never block you from sending me money. <laughs> <laughs> never. I don't. I don't even, you you can't even do that on YouTube. So there's got to be something to do with your account. Um, your YouTube. Yeah. 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 Let's try well, that's all I have to say for this episode of Nerd Theory Council. Uh, does anyone else uh, want to say anything? New Halo's out. It's real dope. Check it. Yeah. It's, it's actually out? Yeah, yeah they out. dropped the multiplayer early today, bro. Okay, I'll have to jump into that. Also, Josh, I saw you on a stream playing Apex. I'm trash, but we got to play. Oh, I'd love to, man. I mean, this week I'm going to be caught up on that Halo, though. I, I'm going to be figured, playing that. I but, uh... <laughs> Yeah, we can play some Apex sometime. I, uh, I'm not that great myself, but together we'll we'll get one of the nerd ventures to carry us or something. So it'll be all good. I'm gonna go play um, Bounty Hunter on the gaming channel, and then probably some COD too. Dude, are we done playing COD? Are we never playing COD again? No, we definitely play COD again. But this week I'm on Halo, bro. Like I can't not play Halo. In fact, I'm yeah. trying to, in my mind right now figure out a way to go play more halo even though i literally didn't go shopping and elisa was just sitting there staring at me scorning me as i played a bunch of halo leading up to this i'm trying to think of what i could do <laughs> to play more <laughs> that's not even a joke too like i was literally like what am i gonna do like, <laughs> probably not play halo anyway Yo, it, would you say it's tough having two dogs because i want to get another one yes 
Yes. I mean, it's really rewarding. <laughs> Do they like, if they like each other, it's easier. <laughs> it's yeah. easier if they like each other. I would almost say it would be better if at least one of them were older. You know what I mean? Cause like, like a lot like, older, right? Yeah. Because like our pups, bro, like they're just, they're wild. Like they're wild. I mean, mm. we love them, but like, yeah, they're difficult, man. And yeah. Uh, a quick question for theory. Did they change the... Like, I, what, what are you playing Bounty Hunter on? Because I never got to beat the game because it 4. was okay. A PlayStation Five. It was it was back in the days where the camera followed your character, and yeah. I just I got car sick every time, and I would yeah, have to throw still, up. It still does that. Oh, damn it, it still does that, man. But but, and it's inverted too, so it's like I'll be going this way and it goes that way. Yeah. Never got it's, to beat it because I would almost throw up. After playing it's it for good, 30 minutes. I really and I would like still it. play it. I'd still play it. <laughs> I really like it. I really, really like it. But yeah, it's kind of annoying like that. I hope they revamp the game. I hope that new like open world Ubisoft game is gonna be maybe like that. Maybe I'm hoping that. for some good stuff. That'd be fun. You I think 2022 is gonna be a big year for us fans. Big old year for Star Wars. Games World. and all that probably Fallen Order 2 will be announced, you know, trailers, all that stuff. This time next year, we will have a Kenobi trailer. <laughs> uh, I think it's way too late. I don't no, think it's going to last so long. We'll probably, be, uh, we'll, we'll probably be watching Mando Season 3 by this time next year. Or around this time. Will yeah. We? Oh, shit. Um, what do you know? Like December? Gosh. No, what I mean, I just... I would hope so. That's all I'll say. Is like I would certainly hope so. I'm excited for Why season two. It's going to be a Instagram mess. I ignore all messages. I ignore emails. I ignore Instagram messages. I ignore tweets. I don't even go on Twitter. I don't read anything you guys send. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't even read comments anymore. I just upload my stuff and I walk away. The only time you can catch me is when I'm live. That's it. Catch me live. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have no life if I just answered every single person that messages me. It's true. But I appreciate the love. You know, I, I appreciate the support. Just by you guys watching and uh, commenting. I read some comments here or there, but I remember in the beginning I would like make it a thing to go through every single comment and reply to every single one. Now it's just a lot. So. I mean, once you hit three million, it's <laughs> <laughs> kind of exhausting, you know? It's not exhausting. It's, it's just, yeah, I figure my time will be best spent by creating um, the content that people want to see versus, you know, just yeah spending the entire day like replying to stuff like if i go to my requests on instagram and i refresh if i refresh every minute or so there's a new slew of like a whole page of new messages yeah, for sure. it's, it's wild man it's crazy yeah, man. but i'm hum humbled thank you but with that being said i think uh we shall all peace out the uh, sun will shine on us again yeah and i saw someone said is lauren kicked off that no she's busy she is busy. Ah, Mrs. Rob Slack. Hello. Rob Slack's wife. Yeah. Right Penny on. Penny Slack. Penny Slack. Now, Lauren, will, be, will she will be back soon. Uh, what do you expect from Thrawn in Ahsoka? He's such a complex character. Y'all looking forward to the book coming up. I want to see you, him you, darker. You, you read the book, Chaco. Yeah. Ooh. Is it good? Uh, it, it is good. I, I feel like they've been doing a, a really good job with their third books in trilogies um and a, in a poor job with the second book <laughs> because mm -hmm. the second book the third book is such a continuation of the second book that i would even recommend people reread it uh, the second one but it's uh it's it's good it's enjoyable it makes me want to know more about the chiss ascendancy itself and how it could uh play out so another prequel one like it's like yeah pre okay this is the last book before they find Thrawn in like uh, Empire Space or whatever. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool. Well, we'll catch you all later. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And we'll see you next week. And of course, in tomorrow's video, uh, go follow everybody here on their respective channels. And uh, we'll catch you later. Love you. Peace. Peace.